Welcome to Kansas Ag Reports. I'm Ken Rogers. On this week's program, we talk with Assistant State Climatologist Dr. Mary Knapp about the mesonet system around the state, as well as what we can expect for the summer growing season. We'll also have features from the Kansas Soybean Commission, Kansas Department of Agriculture, and Kansas Grain Sorghum, as well as our updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and market information from Pinion, a division of KCO ISO. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org. And the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agu.net, with the hot land market right now, it's extremely important for those who want to sell a farm to be sure that they expose it to the whole marketplace, use some sort some of uh, competitive bidding process so that potential buyers can establish the high bid. Knowing the local land market, critical to deciding what competitive bidding process to use. Determining factors when looking at the local land market include the type and quality of land for sale, customs of local land buyers, and expectations of the seller. The sales process that works in one area may not in another, so it's essential to know the market and land. One traditional method for competitive bidding is the public outcry auction, which is a common way to sell farmland in the heart of the Corn Belt. Now, today, it's beneficial to do a simulcast auction, which broadcasts to the live auction and online viewers and registered online bidders who can place bids electronically right along with the in-person crowd. Bids from both online and in-person bidders are posted on a screen for all to see. That makes the process fully transparent. The advantage of having online bidding along with live auction is what gives the opportunity for interested buyers who cannot attend the live auction. It also fosters competitive bidding in that whole process. Other competitive bidding sales methods include online timed auction, like those you see on eBay. Written bid sales are common ways in some regions to foster a competition among potential buyers. And there are variations of bid sales that can be utilized depending on the market and the land that's being sold. An additional benefit to the seller using a competitive bidding process to sell their land is that they control most of the terms as these have been set and advertised to the public from the start. Now, in the current land market, where there are more buyers than sellers of farmland, it's wise to consider some form of competitive bidding to market and sell farms. That according to Randy Dickhut with Farmers National Company. It's important, he says, to have a trusted advisor and broker who can offer the full complement of sales tools tailored to the land and the market in order to get the best price for the seller. Well, in 2020, the federal government provided assistance to farm operations that experienced losses because of COVID-19. The aid came in the form of loans for the Paycheck Protection Program and payments from a couple of iterations of the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, CFAP-1 and CFAP-2. PPP was administered by the U.S. Small Business Administration. It provided loans to small businesses to help them keep their workers employed during the pandemic. CFAP was administered by the USDA Farm Service Agency. It provides assistance to agricultural producers whose operations were directly affected by the pandemic. The PPP loan amount each farm business could receive depended on their income and employment costs, while CFAP payments based on commodity prices, previous sales, acres, and or inventory. USDA Economic Research Service researchers compared the total amount of PPP loans plus CFAP payments received in each state in 2020 to its 2019 value of production. Now, the estimates of last year's value of production not yet available, but California received the most aid, $3.1 billion in PPP and CFAP. Iowa was second at $2.4 billion. More news at agview.net. Stay with us. The Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by Kansas Grain Sorghum. Growers working together. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com and agview.net, serving the beef belt and western corn belt with reliable and relevant agriculture information. agview.net. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, 
and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldy Seed today. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Joining us is Mary Knapp, who is the uh, state uh, uh, assistant climatologist. Uh, Mary, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Ken. Thanks for having me. Well, it seems like as we're in the middle of May, we'd be talking about a very warm spring, but that hasn't quite happened. So we'll talk more about maybe what to expect this winter uh, and maybe moving on from there. But in this first segment, I, I want to talk about uh, something that uh, continues to be a very valuable tool, not only for farmers and ranchers, but really all Kansans. And this is uh, the, the Mesonet and the project that uh, is giving uh, very solid weather data uh, to really anybody that needs it or wants it. Right. What we have is, uh, as you noted, the Mesonet. Mesonet is a network of automated weather monitoring stations um, the roots of our mesonet actually go back to the 1980s, 85, 86, where um, stations were set up at uh, the research and experiment fields across the state. Um, technology was not as, as advanced at that time. Um, we could store on our data logger less than what you could store on your phone in current um, times, but we do have hourly and daily data for a wide range of parameters going back to that time frame, <laughs> The value, as you noted, has continued to grow on that. So we started expanding in the late 1990s and into 2000, and now we're up to 74 stations. In that time, we've changed configuration a little bit. Back in the earlier day, like I said, we just had hourly and daily data, and we only had a limited number of parameters that we were measuring. As computing technology expanded, um, we expanded what we were monitoring. And so in addition to temperature, wind speed, wind direction, solar radiation, and soil temperature, we've added um, the soil moisture data uh, to help keep a handle on that underground component of the climate. Um, and we also added barometric pressure. So those are, and the Third component is we went to 30 foot towers so that we could have both the near surface measurements and slightly higher measurements. And that's been particularly useful in checking out things like um, inversion, which is critical when you're looking at spraying. Well, Mary, if folks want to learn more, maybe see uh, the Mesonet uh, location closest to them, how can they uh, get access to that? The easiest way is going to our website, and that is nesonet.ksu.edu. 
You can access it from your um, home computer. You can also access it from your smartphone, either Apple or um, Android. And one thing that we did when we um, designed the website is that we made it um, mobile friendly. So it's not an app, but you can put an icon on your desk, on your phone's um, main page and access it directly. One of the advantages of having it as a um, mobile friendly website is that if they upgrade your phone's operating system, you don't lose the functionality of the website, it's still there. Very good. Mary Knapp, who is the assistant to state climatologist uh, for Kansas, she's out of Kansas State University, is joining us. Let's take a break. We're going to talk about maybe what to expect and what's going on with this weather. We'll do that when we return. Kansas Ag Report brought to you in part by the Kansas Livestock Association, supporting members' business interests and meeting consumer demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future at kansascorn.com. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety, that future is here the time is now. To meet end user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Dr. Mary Knapp is uh, joining us. She is the assistant to state climatologist for Kansas. And uh, Mary, it's been a very interesting winter where maybe we didn't see the extreme bitter uh, temperatures and big snowfalls that some had predicted. But uh, the spring, it seems like uh, it's taken a while to kind of get things going on a consistent basis. So uh, I guess the first thing is what's going on and and what can we expect? And, and what about all this uh, talk about, uh, about climate? Has, has Kansas changed a lot? Well, Kansas has changed a little bit, but it's kind of hard to um, pull out the details on that because we have such a variable climate. Um, when you look at the extremes that we've seen this spring, you look into our historical records and you say, well, okay, they're extreme, but they're not unprecedented. We've had them in the past. Um, one thing that we've noted, uh, as you said, is that the springtime has been pretty elongated, if you will, and we haven't been able to really shake um, our winter as witnessed by the snow that we had in April. <clears throat> and again, that's not our latest snow, but it is certainly not something you see every year. Um, Soil temperatures have stayed fairly moderate over the time, but they haven't warmed up as quickly as we would expect in the springtime. Um, one of those uh, factors has been, we've seen some rainfall in the recent days, um, maybe not quite as much as we normally would see, but we do see um, a favorable pattern, particularly in the Northwest where the rains have been very timely and in very beneficial amounts. In contrast, the Southeast looks, if you just look at the numbers, like it's doing pretty well, it's close to normal, maybe slightly above normal. But when you dig into it, you find that most of that was due to a heavy rain event in March with very little rain in April. And you're going, well, the distribution hasn't really been as favorable as we would like. 
at the moment, as we're speaking, um, we are seeing some rain out in the western parts of the state. Um, some places of west central Kansas have seen over an inch in the last 24 hours. So again, um, very beneficial for the winter wheat. Uh, get it in, in there at the time when we're moving into our critical growth period. I think probably the biggest question on folks' mind is, uh, what, what can we expect this summer when we're right in the middle of uh, the prime growing season when uh, uh, the corn is uh, pollinating and, and soybeans are starting to bloom? What, uh, what possibly could we expect? Well, unfortunately, the current three-month outlook, which is for May, June, and July, is favoring warmer and drier than normal across the state. And that, of course, is not what we would hope to see at the critical time period. Rains that we've had um, in April and May can quickly fade if we move to warmer, windy weather, which we typically get in the summer. And if it's even warmer than usual, that's going to be a challenge. Um, it is worth noting that the Climate Prediction Center, which makes those outlooks, updates that on the third Thursday of every month. So next Thursday, they will release a new update for um, the rest of the summer season. And it's worth going to that site, checking it out, and seeing if um, maybe a slightly more favorable outlook has, has uh, materialized. All right, Mary. Well, I wish we could talk weather probably the whole time, but we've got to uh, keep uh, moving. So we sure appreciate the update. And again, encourage folks to check out the Mesonet to get a good idea of not only what's happening in your area, but maybe other parts of the state as well. So Dr. Mary Knapp, who is Assistant Climatologist for the state of Kansas, located at Kansas State University, has joined us. Stay with us more in a moment. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Research has already proven that biodiesel benefits the environment. Now, a study released by Trinity Consultants in partnership with the National Biodiesel Board shows that biodiesel also benefits human health. Using B100, pure biodiesel, can decrease cancer risk and asthma attacks, plus it can result in healthcare cost savings. The study occurred in 13 communities where diesel is frequently used, with transportation and home heating oil as the focus. When replacing petroleum-based diesel with biodiesel, the benefits were clear. Researchers concluded that 13 communities would benefit from 340 fewer premature deaths, 46,000 fewer lost work days, and $3 billion in avoided health care costs annually. The study used an air toxic-based health risk assessment to analyze fuel sources and translate the results into risk metrics. The locations were primarily coastal communities with higher density populations and thus higher exposure to petroleum pollution. If you're interested in reading more about this recent study, check out the biodiesel.org news and resources page. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. 
For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. The KDA Feed and Fertilizer Laboratory tests samples for the dairy and feed and the pesticide and fertilizer programs, providing test results in a timely manner to safeguard animal and plant health. We routinely examine animal feeds for drugs and antibiotics, including medicated feeds, to ensure they contain a level of medication that matches the product label. We also test for cross-contamination by feed additives or medications. We test livestock and pet foods for threats like aflatoxin, which can be life-threatening if consumed by animals. This lab also conducts testing to verify labeling claims of feed and fertilizer products, like testing for nitrogen, potash, phosphorus, and sulfur. The feed and fertilizer lab is critical to protecting animal and plant health, as well as providing economic protection for consumers. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldy Seed today. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Governor Laura Kelly has recognized the contributions ranchers and feeders make to the state's economy by declaring May as Beef Month in Kansas. The proclamation signing took place at Perry Ranch, owned by Phil and Rhonda Perry near Oskaloosa. Throughout the month, the Kansas Livestock Association and the Kansas Beef Council are making Kansas residents aware of the hard work producers put in each day to provide high-quality beef to consumers within the state and around the world. As part of these efforts, members of KLA are taking over the association's Facebook page on various days throughout May to give a glimpse into life on a cow-calf ranch and stalker operation, in a feed yard, and at a livestock auction market. KLA and Kansas Beef Council staff also will be distributing information about the positive impacts the Kansas beef industry has on the environment, local communities, and the state's overall economy. Some of the facts that will be highlighted include how the state ranks nationally in various cattle and beef production categories. For example, Kansas ranks second nationwide in the number of fed cattle marketed with nearly 5 million head and third nationally with 6.5 million cattle on ranches and in feed yards. Additional information being shared is focused on how cattle upcycle plant forage into human edible protein and how beef fits into a healthy diet. You can follow KLA on Facebook by searching for Kansas Livestock Association and on Twitter at News from KLA. To follow the Kansas Beef Council, search for Kansas Beef on Facebook and Twitter. 
Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn. For livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population, the farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Mitch Dewar here with Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. Over the past few weeks, corn and soybeans have moved to new highs on South American weather, China buying, and concern on our domestic weather. On March 12th, the USDA released their May crop production and supply and demand report. In these times of extreme volatility and high prices we are experiencing, the USDA reports have had everyone on their toes. Old crop any stocks for corn came at one 1.257 billion bushels, which was in line with the analyst estimate of 1.275, and down from the April report of 1.352 billion bushels. This was the first time the USDA released numbers on the 21-22 crop and pegged corn at 1.507 billion bushels. On the soybean side, USDA printed an old crop number of 120 million bushels, which was the same as the April report, and a new crop number of 140 million bushels. Stocks continue to stay tight and we continue to see soybean prices rise trying to buy acres. The wheat numbers were right in line with all of the analyst estimates, but we continue to see wheat make its way into the feed channel and will start to tighten supplies. In the livestock sector, both the live and feeder cattle futures found a bottom and have bounced back. Feeders continue to watch corn closely and the live cash cattle market continues to struggle as well. If you would like to talk about your grain and livestock marketing plan, give us a call at 888 452-8751. I'm Mitch Deer with Pinion, a division of Keiko Isom. Well, that's our show. Be social with us at kansasagreport.net or our other social media channels. Safety first, safety always, because we want you to be with us next time on the Kansas Ag Report. I'm Ken Rogers. Have a great week. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety. That future is here. The time is now. To meet end user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Does your health plan lack dental and vision coverage? With Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans, you can get a dental and vision bundle for yourself or your family at an affordable price, giving you the ability to maximize your benefits and lower your costs. Plus, you'll get a solid network of providers in one convenient package. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you.